All right, this morning I'm going to be talking about best practice in FME 2014, this time showing you my screen. So we want to go over in the next eight or seven minutes a few of the things that are in FME 2014 that you can use to better organize your workspaces because after all, organization is important. You wouldn't not organize your child's birthday party, would you, Mark Ireland? You wouldn't not organize your trip to the International User Conference for FME here in Vancouver in June, would you, Ron? Well, I know, Ron, you can't come, but if you were coming, Ron, you would have organized, I'm sure. So why wouldn't you organize your FME workspaces? Because, after all, bad practices in FME are not a victimless crime. So there's about five things to keep in mind that we're going to quickly look at when it comes to the best practices. And the first is some of the habits you should have. And I'm going to actually go ahead and whip over to FME 2014 with any luck. So Stephanie, is my screen showing now just fine? Are you seeing FME 2014? Yes, I see FME 2014. That's good news. So we're going to look at a few things in FME 2014 in the next five minutes to help you make better use of your time and make better use of your organization ability. The first thing is please put in comments in your workspaces because the, the point is that for most things uh, software-wise, they are written once and read ten times. So you want to be kind to those ten times guys that are going to come visit you and look at your things in the future. So we've added some things in FME 2014 to make documenting even more pleasant. Things like setting the background color. And if I go ahead and I double click say on this one, I see this toolbar appears that lets me start to control things. I can turn off and on the word wrap. So if I turn the word wrap off, then I can't resize it horizontally. If I turn it on, then there's a little drag bar here and I can start to do this sort of thing. So you can see that that can be useful as you format things. I can change the color by hitting that. I can fiddle with the font. So if I really want to say these attributes as opposed to other attributes, I can make them italics. Or I can go ahead and make them even bigger in size by choosing a different font. There we go. So I can do all those sorts of things. I can make hyperlinks, which can be very handy to embed a link to some additional documentation outside. Let's link that to safe.com and see what happens. There you go. So you see these kinds of things can be done. I can even make tables in here. So I can go ahead, let's just go and um, add a table. And I'm going to make it, uh, let's say, a two by two table. Yep. And there it would be. So that's, that's the kind of thing that I can do. So um, we can go ahead and show you that there's links in here already. And that's the main things on the um, canvas. So some other things that changed in FME 2014 in the last couple of minutes that are worth pointing out. Um, of course, if you have uh, a new transformer and you're adding it, um, you can go ahead and click somewhere. And let's just put in another clipper. And this floating bar appears above, which I can use to control which outputs are connected. So if you see there, I'm connecting up the other, uh, the other outputs. If I do this again, and I hit the thing to control the inputs, I can have the clip E, for example. So that's a handy thing with respect to that. Of course, you can always get to the properties of any transformer by double-clicking anywhere on it. So you don't have to get to this little area. That's one thing that's been there for a while. Um, we've made the yellow more subtle, um, but if there is a, a parameter that needs filling in, then it will go red. So if we put in, for example, the bufferer, you can see that it is bright red and needs to be filled in. We added the ability for you to create attributes on an any output port. So if I go ahead and connect the bufferer in here, and then I go and say, um, whoops, on an output port, I say add attribute. I can type an attribute of Dale and I can start giving it a value that can be in fact quite complex. It could be the area. I could go in here and say it's actually the area um, multiplied by something. So I could go area times 7 and that would create me that new attribute. It puts that pink thing there and the output port is actually colored that way so that I know in the future that some attribute was added. This can be very handy to do. I think the last thing I wanted to really show you was that we changed the way that you move these links. We know that that's an important thing many of you do. If you um, see I've got kind of a fox hockey puck shooting out from my cursor down to my lower left. If I move up here, then that hockey puck shoots out to the upper right. 
basically, as soon as I see that thing shooting out, if I click, which I've now done, I can drag and I can move that link. Before, you used to have to select, then navigate in here and move. Now you can just go and, and grab anywhere. So that is a key thing there. There's a number of other things. We made these upper and lower case so they don't take as much space. And we added decorations that should help you understand when things are coming into your workspace. Or let's say in the case of something like the database, database updater, going out of your workspace. So you can see this right hand um, thing there. So that's uh, some of the other things around that. And so just to finish up this section on best practices, I'm going to go back to my slides and um, remind you that you can always use custom transformers which now have versioning in them. I, I mentioned the edit value thing. And of course, um, right click to reset zoom. So we can, we can uh, get into a zoom mode and start zooming in. But we can always right click and then we're back to the normal kind of mode that we um, work with. So we talked about tables. You saw that already. Bullet points and lists are also able to be there. Alignment, we lost the auto layout, but we gave you an align off of the right click to align tops and centers, which you can also add as toolbar, toolbar shortcuts. And then we can, all, can just walk through here. It's take an old workspace and slowly we turn it into something that looks really nice. The decorations come in. Um, the, the, ah, we didn't mention that if there was a single input port like this, in the future, that's gone in 2014, and you connect right there, and the port names are camel case. So that's really it. Um, other than to where you can, do tell us if you know something about the order of features. We can make things go a little faster if you remind us, hey, the suppliers are coming first, the clippers are coming first. These kinds of things can give us good hints. And debugging, don't forget that you can always, inside of a workspace, right-click on a link and say, add an inspection point. That adds that stop sign. Now if you run with debugging, you can watch what's going on at that location. The point is to avoid the chamber of horrors. You don't want your workspaces looking like this. This would have been a good opportunity for things like fan in and fan out to be used, probably custom transformers, and um, even more uh, bodacious use of uh, bookmarks, yes bodacious bookmarks. All right, so the final warning is that if you fail to do this um, and you're caught, you'll be punished by five years of training with Mark Ireland uh, as your uh, jail master, so watch out for that.